Eternally Yours, a program of inspiring music and an eternal message of hope. On this program, Rev. Jerry Apinga continues his testimony. Our musical guests are the royal heirs, and Rev. Mabley's sermon is titled, Great Faith, Perfect Faith. Now let's join Rev. Mabley and her guest, Rev. Jerry Apinga. Welcome once again to Eternally Yours Telecast Testimony Time. And if you missed last week's testimony of this dear man of God, you be sure and order the DVD. It was so moving. Oh my goodness, so moving. And we're going to carry on with what else has happened in this wonderful man's life who had a dynamic conversion. And he might share just a wee bit about it on this telecast. So I welcome once again from up north, down here in my home, uh, Reverend uh, Jerry Epinga. Amen. Praise the Lord. Welcome again. We have, we want to hear more about your life in Christ. Thank you. It's an honor to be here and lift up the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. After Jesus came in my heart, I stood in front of those bars and I see the people back and forth uh, going into the bar and I understood they were on their way to the wrong place. Mm -hmm. And I made a commitment to God that day that I will not point my finger at them because I was the day before like them. But the height I had in God was not the same as when I stood in front of the bars. That particular height was gone. But the revelation that Jesus Christ is real and that God is truly there did not leave me. Mm -hmm. But I had to make up my mind. Are you going back in the bar? Or are you going to serve God now? And because God gave me the grace to have a revelation without doubt that He is there and that He's in my heart, that He can save the soul, that heaven and hell is real, and that the power of the Spirit causes you to be born again, beyond doubt, I had to make a choice. And I said, my choice is, the world destroyed me, I will serve Jesus. Amen. So from that day on, I went a different way. I stopped going to the bars. I stopped drinking, not in my own power, but God always helped me. Amen. Amen. And I stopped drinking. I stopped smoking. I bought myself a big fan, uh, just a regular fan, and I had it parked at my, uh, the parents of my wife. And I had a painter come and to paint a sign on there, Return to Jesus Christ. And my wife thought, well, uh, there are going to be letters about this big. And, but when the time he was finished, those letters were that big. <laughs> and I had a truck in Prince Rupert for 15 years, because when I felt the power of God and the reality of Jesus Christ, I said the whole world needs to know this. Mm -hmm. This is a tremendous thing, because if you would ask me, Sister Audrey, what is the greatest thing mm -hmm. ever, ever happened in your life? And I've been everywhere. I've been with poor people. I've been with very rich people. And they advised me, and they had things to say. But the biggest thing ever happened in my life was when I felt God's Spirit going through me Amen. and knew that He was there. Yes. That is not for sale in the store, no. but it is for free for everybody. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, the same shall be saved. God is not a respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. And so, little by little, I changed my life. And then I worked in construction, and later on I went in business. I had a business in Abbotsford. And then after I understood I had to sell the business because God wants me to preach the word, mm -hmm. especially to the First Nations people. It's so needful. So many of them have been caught up into alcohol. So yes. many of them. Yes. And drugs too. So they really, 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 really needed that. Yes. Um, and I'm so glad that he called you into the ministry because your testimony is so dynamic. And um, I'm just so thankful. Let's hear more what God's doing. Yes. And then as uh, life developed and my business sold, I sold everything. And I went, I had a home in Mission. I went to study in the basement. I could have bought homes because my wife came. They, they were selling homes off reserve. I, I, I could have had a lot of money, but I dropped everything. And it was not maybe the right way to do it, but that's how I did it. Mm -hmm. And I bought a house, I, I, I built a home in the old Masset Reserve in the Queen Charlotte Islands. And that's where God put me amongst the native people. 
Uh, that's what he taught me, what they know and what they don't know. That's what he taught me, what I should know. So I obeyed God to go, and, and so a little at a time I started to understand what he's trying to say to me. And so I worked there. I lived six years on welfare. I stood in the welfare line with alcoholics in front of me, with drug addicts behind me, and I was very, very happy. I brought souls to Jesus every day. But one day God said to me in my heart, my son, you work with me. You don't have to live like that. I'm going to show you a different way. And so life develops and a step at a time. Right now we have uh, two gospel tents. Mm. I have two big tents and we share the gospel. Every time I set up my tent, firstly when we moved to Prince George because my son went to medical school there, I set up the tent in the hood. I didn't know what the hood meant, <laughs> but the hood is the crime section of the city. Oh. When I came to Regina in Edmonton and Saskatoon in Winnipeg, I stood in the hood. So when I was in Winnipeg in the hood, I, he said, do you know what that means? I said, yes, because I've I been in the hood everywhere. I don't know why God sends me to the hood. <laughs> we stood in, with our gospel tent in Winnipeg. There were two people murdered a few days before we came. Mm -hmm. The police had a hard time to keep the city in control and to fight the crime. Mm -hmm. And we set up the tent there. Pete was there, Peter was there, and me. And so you have three sons. I have three right. sons. And a lovely wife, Beatrice. My wife, Beatrice, from the Heiden Nation. And they were all, all serving you with the Lord. My well, son Peter is, my wife and my other sons know the Lord, but I do not want to particularly say on the program that they are really sure of the Lord. Mm. But I pray that as I reach out to the lost and bring people to Jesus Christ, that God may honor my life to save all my sons too. Of course he will. We are saved in our whole household. He's working on them. You and Beatrice's prayers are following those lads. Praise the living God. So here you are, you're having tent meetings and you're um, evangelizing, you're a strong evangelist. Your testimony is so dynamic, it touches people. And he's got you in the right place at the right time, those broken, hurt lives that need to hear your story that is so true from your heart. Do you have anything more you want to say about the ministry? Yes, or we have. Or your, your little, little book? That yeah, we have about? a booklet. Salvation, God's mm -hmm. blueprint for eternity. Mm, so when, when people come to Jesus Christ, they get this book and they can read the scriptures. What must I do to be saved? How can I be saved? What happens to me when I get saved? Mm -hmm. And right now there is a powerful development taking place because God is going to visit the First Nations people. There has come a, a move of His Spirit upon the people. And right now God is putting the, everything in place, not just through my life or your mm. life, mm. but through all Amen. those whom Amen. He has called Amen. and loves Him. To work in unity and stand in unity together before God, to see God do His thing, which will scare the devil right in His boots. Amen. My brother, you have a witness, I have a witness, because my main gifting is evangelist that God, by the Holy Spirit, will move across this nation of Canada, where we both live, like a prairie fire. And from the west to the east, so said the prophetic word from Jack Hayford, I was in that meeting, when uh, the Lord spoke through him, it will go from the west to the east, and we're pretty far west, so we're part of it. Yes. And we've been believing re for revival for decades. Yes. And, and it's at the door, in fact, we let it in. There's revival, fire in your ministry, in your life, mm. and in mine, and mm. in many others. Amen. And be expecting just what this man of God said. God's been getting people ready, and uh, I just so enjoyed talking to you. Thank you. It's been an absolute joy. Praise and the Lord. thank you, thank God, and Father, I pray you bless his ministry, bless his sons, uh, the doctor, and the other one that's also learning some wonderful trade. And bless him and dear Beatrice, their ministry, their lives in Christ. In Jesus' holy name, I bless Thank them. You, I bless them with the blessings of Abraham upon my life. Mm. I bless this man of God Thank you, and Jesus. the good work you're doing through his life and through this telecast. In Jesus' holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Bless you, my brother. Amen. Praise God.
whatever measure of faith you are walking in, this message, I pray to God, will stir up you to be stronger in faith and to understand two important things, great faith and perfect faith. Hallelujah. See, without faith, you cannot please God. Faith moves the heart of God. And you all have a measure of faith. Isn't that gracious? God's word says he's given every mankind a measure of faith. Every mankind, especially destined for eternal life, has a measure of faith. Hallelujah. So let's look into what does it mean to have great faith? How do you have great faith? And what does it mean to have perfect faith, which can move the mountains that come to our lives? We all get them, and we want to have the faith to move them. Amen? So I hope you listen with your hearts. First is great faith. In a nutshell, great faith is, absolutely great faith is believing God's word. Now, how can I say that's the definition? That's a description of great faith. Absolutely. Because Jesus described it that way. I will paraphrase and then I'll read the story a time aloud. The centurion sent someone. He didn't think he was worthy even to talk to Jesus or have Jesus under his roof. He sent someone to Jesus to ask Jesus to um, say but the word and his servant would be healed. Jesus, when he heard how sick, terribly sick, probably at death's door the servant was, he said, I will come and heal him. And they said, this, then they said, no, I'm not even worthy you should enter my roof. Say but the word, and my servant will be healed. For I speak a word to my servants, my soldiers, and they will do what I say. They do what I say. That centurion believed that all Jesus had to do was speak because God speaks and it happens. I hope you know that. He spoke the whole world and us into existence and it happened. And I've seen in the word of God, God's holy word, that God just thinks something that he wants to have happen and that will happen too. Oh, when my grandsons were very young, I said, you think Superman and Spider-Man and all that pretty great? I'll tell you, our God Almighty just speaks and it happens, hallelujah. So let's hear the story from the book of Luke, chapter seven. One to five. Jesus went with them. He heard that centurion was sick. And when he's already not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself. I'm not worthy you should enter under my roof. Therefore, I did not even think myself worthy to come to you. But say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man placed under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes. And to another one, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard these things, pay attention to these words, beloved. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him. And he turned around and he said to the crowd that followed him, I say to you, I've not found such great faith. No, not in all of Israel. And those who were, who were sent, returned to the house, found the servant well who had been sick. So great faith for you and me is believe this word. Beloved, I tell you, if you believe this word, and I choose with all my heart to believe God's word, believe God's word above your circumstances, believe God's word above your five sentence, senses, believe your word, God's word above what you're feeling and, and, and you're going through. Pray God's word in your circumstances. I do it all the time, and his word works. Do you know how I know the word works? First of all, it's been working for me for over three decades following my Lord Jesus. Secondly, 1 Thessalonians 2 says, 2.13, it says, I thank you, Father, I have received your word, as it is in truth, the word of God that works effectually in I who believe it. You gotta believe it. Choose to believe God's word. I know that I know that I know his word is true. Just think about it, Christians watching this telecast. You have received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and as you follow him, you have seen changes in your life. How did you get saved? How did you think to receive Christ? You heard the words that were in the Bible. That's one living proof of the power of God's word. And when I use God's word in my prayers for circumstances, the ministry, his word is alive. 
Oh, I have about 10 points about his word. I hope I can get to them at the end of the telecast. But let's move on to the description of perfect faith. If you're moving in great faith, if we're moving in great faith, let's move on to perfect faith. Okay, what is perfect faith? In a nutshell, the description of perfect faith, from my understanding of God's word, is a doer of the word. A doer of the work. Faith without works is dead. But faith with works is perfect faith. So let us put action to our words. The way I say it, my assistant pastor Georgia is, we want to walk the talk. We don't want to just say to people thus and thus. We want to believe it and live it. Walk the talk is my motto. And I want to believe and do that. Now, perfect faith... Where did I get that description from? The book of James, chapter 2, 21, 22. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac, his son, on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with works? And by works, faith was made perfect. There's the description from God's word about perfect faith. Think of Abraham. He knew that God had said to him, his wife, Sarah, 90 years old, was going to have a baby. And he was already 100. And it happened. So he knew how to hear God's word. He knew the leading of the Lord. Think of it. This 90-year-old woman nursed Isaac on her youthful breast. When Abimelech wanted to bed with, her, with uh, Sarah, God had already restored her youth, and she was so beautiful at 90 that Abraham lied and said, she is my, well, it was half lie. He said, she is my sister because he feared for his life. But notice, God protected Sarah. He spoke to Abimelech in a dream, and he said, do not touch her. She belongs to Abraham. So he had a destiny for her. And that so blesses me because, first of all, God still calls Abraham the father of faith. And he was so fearful. So do not be thinking all the time that your fear, when you fear sometimes, we all do at times, we need to repent, of course, and be set free with perfect love. But he was fearful, and God still called him the father of faith. That encourages me. I hope it encourages you. But when Abraham took his son up there and took the knife to obey God and slay his son, perhaps he knew it was God testing him. But he also knew that God had said to him that through him would be multitudes of people, generations, like uh, millions, like the sand. So God knew that if he slayed Isaac, God was going to raise him up from the dead so that he could have seed going on for the generations when God had spoken to him. And besides that, here's a total understanding from God's word that proves Abraham totally believed that if he did follow God's instruction and slayed his son with that dagger, that the son would be raised up. Because notice the word of God, you can check it out, it says, he said to his servants before he went up to the mount with his son to obey God, he said to his servants, we will return to you. Me and the lad, we will return to you. And yet he knew full well he was going to obey God. And then, of course, God, when he saw that he was going to obey him, he said, you don't have to. And he provided, Jehovah Jireh provided a lamb. But my point is, Abraham was justified by works. And God's word says that faith was working together with works. And by works, faith was made perfect. Oh, folks, let's move into great faith and let's move into perfect faith that we can see so many prayers answered, that people will be in awe, and they will want what we have, discovering that we have a God of love. We have a God that says in Ephesians 3, it says he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ask or think. Isn't that amazing? You and I could ask and think a lot. Believe me, I ask and think a lot. Even being on telecast, what it costs to be on telecast. And God is providing by miraculous ways. And perhaps through you. I'm telling you, 
God is a God of miracles. So faith creates works and it enables perfect faith. Be a doer of the word, not just a hearer. James 1, 21 to 25 says what it's like if you just hear the word but you don't do it. You kind of forget who you really are. You see, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ as Lord, and it's my prayer that you are. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ as Lord, be about believing. Because God said in James 1, 21 to 25, be a doer of the word, not just a hearer. For if you hear the word, not a doer, you're like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. And he observes himself and goes away and forgets who he really is. Be a believer of the living God. Have great faith and move on to perfect faith. Amen. Eternally Yours Television is entirely supported by interested viewers and listeners like you. In appreciation of your gift of $20 or more, we are pleased to offer a gift. Please prayerfully consider your role in supporting Eternally Yours Television. Oh, precious ones, in these last few moments of tender time here, I just, just know if you watch this telecast, you've been stirred as believers having Jesus Christ as Lord. You have been stirred to desire not only great faith, yes, but perfect faith being a doer of the will of God. And we're going to pray for that together. I hope you'll be agreeing for your life and mine that it be more so, absolutely more so. We would walk in great faith that so pleases God. It delights Him when we walk in great faith. Oh, but how much more, Father, could we bring joy to your heart if we walk in perfect faith, mature faith, as a doer of the Word of God. Hallelujah. Remembering who we are. You know who we are? We are believers and we're to be about believing. We are people who, Christians who have Jesus Christ as Lord, in the twinkling of an eye, we're going to be just like him. He wants you and I to have great faith. Let's pray for that. Now, how do you get faith? Oh, I'd love to share that the last few moments. Romans 10, verse 17. You get faith by hearing the word of God. If you listen to this telecast, you will hear the word of God, not only today, but going forward. I'm a woman that God has instructed me. My messages are saturated with God's word. And I just love to speak his word to God's people, be his mouthpiece. And so your faith level has rose. May your faith level rise more. Get into strong fellowship where they preach Jesus Christ as Lord. If you don't have a home church, you live in greater Vancouver, come on out to our fellowship. We'll love on you to a deeper life with Christ and you'll hear God's word. But let's pray now together. Amen. Oh, Father. We see in your word, it says, great faith can be ours and perfect faith can be in our lives like it was in Abraham. Oh, Father in heaven, I bow in my heart and pray most sincerely for your precious ones, your loved ones there, your believers out there in, in television land, that they would be stirred by the Holy Spirit to move in a greater way, in great faith, and move on to perfect faith to delight your heart, Father. Hmm. What joy it is to know that we delight our Father's heart. You created us for your pleasure. Help us please you, Father, by working in us a desire to be in your word, hear your word, love your word, believe your word, pray your word in our lives, and move into great faith and on to perfect faith. In Jesus' holy, precious name. We all say, Amen, Amen. Can you imagine thousands, I believe millions, saying Amen? God is working. God is working. God is working. He loves you so dearly. And we love you with God's love. God bless you. If this telecast has ministered to you, would you please prayerfully consider becoming a financial partner that we may continue to reach out for God's glory. It would be wonderful to hear from you.